Well, Saxophone Academy, it's almost the end of January, and I have a question for you. Do you remember your New Year's resolutions? Now, if you're suddenly overwhelmed with a sense of shame, before you crawl back into bed with a pint of Ben & Jerry's, let's talk about some exciting goals we can set on our saxophone for this year to make you a better player. Now, in the comments below, I want you to let me know what do you want to accomplish on the saxophone this year, and if I can help, I will. In the meantime, I've spent $14.99 on some inspirational stock footage. We're gonna get real weird with it. So here's some tips for setting goals with your saxophone playing this year. Whatever goals you've set for yourself, you need to know why you want it. In the lonely, cold hours in the practice room, it's critical for keeping us motivated on track, and it's gonna help us push through those plateaus that we inevitably reach when we practice. It helps us keep the forward momentum and reminds us deep down why we want to play the saxophone to begin with. You also really have to make sure your goals are what you want, not someone else and not just your teacher. Sure, a good teacher will have ideas of what you should and need to be learning, but you should have some large impact over the overarching goals of your saxophone study. You need to make sure you're learning music and ideas that you wanna learn. As a teacher, I have things I need my students to learn. Yes, they're gonna learn their major skills. Yes, they're gonna learn arpeggios. Yes, they're gonna learn chord changes. But more importantly, I need to learn what they wanna play because if I'm not meeting their goals, I'm not doing my job. You don't want to scramble up someone else's ladder of musical success to find they put that ladder against a really stupid wall. So whether you want to join the local ensemble, go to the local jam session, whatever goal you want to meet, make sure you know why you're practicing what you're practicing and make sure it's the best thing to be practicing to get there. Tip number two, make sure your goals are within your locus of control. That's just a fancy way of saying make sure you have influence over the outcome and whether you can meet the objectives. They're not in the hands of other people or organizations. You can't control what other people think of your playing. You can't control how good other people are. You can't control whether or not an audition committee likes your playing. What you can control is how much you practice, how hard you work, the kind of decisions you make in the practice room and outside of the practice room. Those are things inside your locus of control. Goals outside your locus of control generally are too specific and involve things that you can't control. And one of the telltale signs is it involves proper nouns. For example, if you wanted to be first call saxophonist with the Genovia Symphony, there's a couple of big problems with that. Number one, they may have a saxophonist who already has the gig, who's young and healthy with no intent of giving up that job anytime soon. Number two, the audition committee could hate the way you play. They could hate your face. They might hate both. And number three, Genovia is a fictional country from the Princess Diaries. It's a great movie starring Anne Hathaway. You should watch it. Tip number three, once you know the goals are within your locus of control, make sure they are specific. You wanna make sure they're actionable. Goals like get good or be the best, they're too broad to have a clear objective. Goals should be somewhat binary. You know whether or not you accomplish it. You never really get to check that box of get good or be the best. God knows I've been trying for years, but if you set a specific goal, whether or not you know you can meet it, then it's gonna be an objective you can stick with. For instance, you could set the goal of practicing 90 minutes a day, sending four audition packets, learn 20 jazz standards, or transcribe all of Cannonball solos off the album something else. Those are clear things you know whether or not you can achieve, and you get to check off the box and get that sweet, sweet dopamine hit. Tip number four, make sure your goal is going to challenge you as a musician. It should be exciting, something that'll stretch what's possible. Now, of course, we don't want it to be too challenging to the point that it's frustrating or we don't think we could accomplish it, but it should be something that makes you excited to open your case each morning. Because at the end of the day, it's not what we do on the saxophone, it's the person we become. Being a great saxophonist at a buck 50 gets you a cup of coffee in 1985, but the musician and the person we become in the process, the possibilities that open up to us that's what's really exciting. So set the goal of learning Cherokee in 12 keys or learn that nutty concerto with all the altissimo. Whatever you do though, give yourself enough time. Don't underestimate the amount of time that'll take to do it. Consistently, I've overestimated what I can do in one year, but I've generally underestimated what I could accomplish in five years. So shoot for the stars because even if you miss, you'll learn Stardust 
or another tune with star in the name. You can't think of it. So now for your homework, get out a pen and paper and write down what you'd like to accomplish on the saxophone in the next five years. Then pick a one year goal that'll help you get there and make sure you do let me know in the comments below. Then we're gonna reverse engineer it. Think of all the steps that'll need to happen in order for you to meet that goal. Then from there, we're gonna start to schedule those in our daily practice sessions. And we're gonna talk about that in a later video. If you have any questions or I can help, email me, thesaxophoneacademy at gmail.com. I hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you next week with new content. Until then, go practice.